Hey, how's it going? I am going to, I'm going to do what I always do, talk and I have cards this time. So, um, it is the full moon. It is a pink super moon. Um, it actually, um, the peak time has passed where I am. But I did want to talk about, um, how it was making me feel because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's feeling stuff. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I usually get ahead of time, I'll learn that some sort of thing is going to happen like an eclipse and a full moon, which I think that was today too, eclipse and full moon. I forgot about that, which makes it even more exciting. But before I start, turned on the camera, I was thinking about how, uh, how many times I have heard people like first responders and even people in hospitals definitely acknowledge that the rate of like crazy, violent stuff just happens all at once on the evenings that there are full moons, but they won't like give it up that it's because of the full moon and I guess that makes sense in a way because just for myself like it probably was affecting me the whole time but I didn't even notice like and, and I, I knew of the phenomenon for a long time you know so um it actually would be like on the periphery of my thoughts you know but something about now and the way that I am now definitely more sensitive to stuff like that definitely more open to noticing it and definitely uh, have the time and energy to devote to focusing my attention on things like that but it really honestly it's, I don't think it's all because of that because like focus I think it's also just that well, I know that personally, my sensitivities, since uh, I had like my awakening begin and I sort of realized that, oh, that's what that is, even though it had happened before, I didn't recognize it as such. So, I, um, I feel like it's like that quantum thing where a theory will exist in like, purgatory for a while or like just as an a theory as an idea and then eventually it'll get proved and that means that someone has to has has to have seen whatever the theory is play out in action like see it demonstrated in reality somewhere and i guess that's like how the quantum thing works and like that's part of the mechanism for calling it that even uh that it takes it the, the whatever it is <laughs> the thing does need to be noticed and then like seen observed uh before it's more than a theory which kind of I don't know, it blows my mind, and as I say it blows my mind, I feel the back of my head opening up like an artichoke, but okay. So, um, <clears throat> why did I go there <laughs> with the full moon stuff? Um, oh, it was like the awakening, like uh, my awakening, my kundalini awakening made me more aware and sensitive to and open to uh, the idea of the full moon actually doing stuff to me. And it fully could have been, but honestly, for years I was on like a lot of speed and I drank a lot. So I think I was always a little crazy. So I don't know that I would have even noticed a full moon making me behave particularly different. <laughs> I'm like a lot more like clean and cleaned out in the whole deal now. Like it's been many, many years since I was in that condition. 
So now I feel like I can notice stuff. And it's also gotta be because I am deliberately meeting to. It's like my quantum reality. <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> so anyway, I have some cards and I have a few from the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. So the first one I pulled was the number 64 card, Woodwives, and the subtitle is Adaptability. And It's fire season, so I guess I have that on my mind, but as I look at that picture, that illustration, it does seem like, it's, look at where this person is, like their table is part of a tree. They are part tree or something. That's not my indicator. Like their arm is like a branch and uh, they're like almost growing into the stump they're sitting on. And I believe that's a stump. I don't know, I'd just say this person is very organic. <laughs> and I think that just points to like a super awareness uh, of their surroundings, like a connection to it that's so strong that you can feel, n not necessarily a fire, but I feel like that's what this person would sort of see slash feel through their roots if they knew a fire was coming from far away like they would have forewarning because root system because they're like part tree or something and and also like oh wow oh okay there it is <laughs> in in the glare there of the vision i'm gonna call it it's like blocking out what's actually there in the room. Because you can see like a bay window back there. And there's more sort of just kind of house looking stuff. As if she's on like on the outside. But it's like a different dimension. And there's like this wall from this one. Where there's like a bay window and whatever. And I... I had thought that it was like inside of her place because I feel like there's like a table that's set in the background back here and like a cabinet or something you can see part of over here. But like this bright, bright part is her awareness <clears throat> is what I feel like. And so um, the adaptability subtitle I think it's just sort of saying, like, you know something is coming, and I'm, I was using, like, a fire, like a forest fire, for an analogy, but really, it could be, like, anything, like, what's happening now. There's a lot of stuff happening in reality that... Full, here comes the full moon part, sort of occluding exactly what's going on somewhat, you know, like, well, speaking of occluding, isn't there also, what was it, I think it was a lunar uh, eclipse that is, or what, I don't know if it already happened yet, or if it's still supposed to, it is, what time is it? Uh... It's 11 p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time. Well, anyway, so <clears throat> there's like a kind of a double whammy moon situation. I, I mean, unless I'm tripping about the eclipse, I'm pretty sure that's both happening. Well, anyway, still big moon stuff. And that in tarot means that you're not getting the full picture because it's not daylight, it's at night and it's moonlight, so I don't know if you've been outside at night when there's a full moon, but it's not like high noon on a bright clear sunny day there's deep shadows and 
your vision could get confused. Like what you're seeing could look like what it isn't. And that could be deliberate too. From whatever's on the other end of all of this action and brightness, there's something that is attached to it, a part of it caused, that has caused like a big bright commotion for everyone. <laughs> So uh, the next card is number 54 card and it's the crossing and the subtitle for this one is initiation. So um, in this case, I feel like initiation is talking about like whatever you're picking up overnight uh, that may be affecting you, that probably is affecting you because of the full moon. You might have like uh, inflamed emotions. Um, you might be feeling stuff that is uncomfortable because maybe you don't want to be feeling it. Like maybe you're feeling angry and you're not sure why, or maybe you're feeling angry and you are sure why, but you don't want to deal with it, or you're. You, you want to deal with it, but because it's like moonlight, you don't have like all of the information. But you still have to go on anyway. Like if the, this crossing refers to crossing a bridge, and I usually think of it as a different type of graduation is what I usually think of, like an upward gradient to who whoever is crossing this bridge. <clears throat> And they've gone through an initiation. And so I feel like kind of the initiation right now is how are we all dealing with the energy that with the moon energy? Because I feel like it's pretty strong. <laughs> it's a super moon, which means that it is uh, perceptibly closer to the earth. I, I don't know that it's actually closer. It's like a perception thing, but... Uh, I mean, it is, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that real well. <laughs> like, I guess it is closer because it's a lot bigger than usual. And the proximity has an effect on us. Like, I was watching Chernobyl earlier, and at one scene, uh, there's uh, the plant where the reactor blows up is on fire, so the fire brigade shows up, and they're on the outside. So the thing exploded, and then there's pieces on the ground, and one fireman picks it up, picks up a piece, and it's just like this black, broken, looks like a part of a pipe, and he, and he asks his partner, what is this? And the guy says, who knows? Put it down and come grab a hose. And then like 10 minutes later, or however much time has passed in the movie, approximately 10 minutes the guy is on the ground screaming holding his hand that picked up the thing like it's messed up and hurting and because as a viewer and also being 60 years old I know what happened at Chernobyl so I know what he picked up and also I saw the scenes before and so I know what he picked up so I knew it was gonna happen and it's just like uh, I think I watched about 14 minutes of it. It was like, wow, I get why everyone liked it so much. This is really well done, but holy moly, that's a lot to process. <laughs> like, today is not the day to watch Chernobyl for me. <laughs> really emotional. And on a personal note, holy shoe polish, I was having some problems. <laughs> It all worked out because I knew what was happening. <laughs> I knew I knew why I was feeling the way I was feeling, why I was behaving the way I was behaving, which I actually wasn't having like behavior. <laughs> Just saying something that I needed to say. Uh, and it actually went over fine. I was scared to death it wouldn't because crazy feeling moon stuff and then also it's like 
it, throughout the day, it, it made me feel like jubilant and happy and, you know, like ether was being pumped into the room or something. Happy gas. And then it took a turn. <laughs> It was sad. Oh my God, I did so much crying over the past couple of days. And not just like something of mine that blew up way out of proportion, which almost happened today. Like, <laughs> you know, you just have to be so careful when you're tippy toeing across this bridge. Like, that looks pretty wide, but what if it narrows up on you when you're freaking the freak out, you know? And you're just like, oh, okay, I gotta really like, it's dark. I gotta watch my step as best as I can in this moonlight. Next card I pulled was number 51, uh, Stars in the Sky, Limitless Possibility. Now the bridge, and this person is plunked down in the middle of it, like, hold on, I gotta take a meditation break, like, right now. And normally, I would read this as this person went there to do that, like, you know, it's peaceful, it's nighttime, like nobody's around. If they are around, they're sleeping. So like the energy is just very relaxing to get a good meditation going. And, you know, you're making a connection with the heavens or, you know, whatever's up there that you're communicating with uh, when you meditate. And then also just, just in passing as part of my current, like, interest in mudras and well i'll just leave it at that but i rewatched this uh show on youtube sort of explaining a lot of them uh because i can't remember everything i it's good that i didn't well i can't like get rid of it but i'm it's glad that it was there that i could watch it again and it is on my mind i am into it but what they said about this particular position which is the one that you'll see commonly of people meditating and I don't remember the name <laughs> but what it does is I know that you get information from it and it's the connection between your meditation mind which is you know you're cleared out you're calmed down you sort of discarded all of your outer noise and clutter and you can see there's lines going from the mudra up into the heaven. So to, to me, that's symbolic of what I was just talking about. Or, you know, also just demonstrative of what the gesture means and holds and literally showing you like what it's supposed to do <laughs> when you meditate. And I imagine since this person has gone almost transparent that they're like deep in there, they're like a really good meditator. They could very well just be on like the astral plane or something the like there's just one and it's got wings <laughs> it's not like that though where's my rim shot <laughs> anyway so um subtitle on this one is limitless possibility and really i mean once you get through like the period of the full moon like I, and there was a point where I was like, oh, okay. I'm in, like, the eye of the hurricane. Like, I just felt normal <laughs> for the first time in days. And um, I, I can feel that I'm moving out of it. So <laughs> let me hurry up. But that was an interesting thing, uh, interesting sensation. I pulled some cards from the <laughs> Miracle of Cosmic Oracle deck. And I, the, the, the first card I pulled is just so perfect for this subject. Um, here is an astronaut, which is the MTV Music Awards. I think it was the Music Awards. Yeah, it was the Music Awards you just played, uh, I think, last night. I didn't watch or see it. I just saw some news about it. But... Um, the award, I believe, oh, is that the Moon Man is only, I don't know, but the, their award <clears throat> is the Moon Man, which is an astronaut figure, so that is funny, I thought, little uh, synchronicity there, and I, like I was just saying 
that I was really going through it today and like I, I talked, <laughs> I used my words and I wasn't sure if it was safe, but I was really hoping that I did okay. Like sort of curbing my enthusiasm for freaking the freak out. <laughs> it worked out fine. And so the card was all, give yourself some credit. <laughs> You're doing, for doing a good job at this whole living thing. Well, that's very broad. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> that's a whole living thing. Um, interesting. The background seems to be a whole bunch of flowers, doesn't it? It's like the triumphant landing after you made it through the the moon session of, like, for me, going a little nuts. <laughs> I never noticed that before that they were flowers. I thought they were just like space clouds. They're awful colorful. Like I'm not real sure what actually happens with colors when you're out in space. Although I did learn yesterday. I don't know if this is um, germane or not, but <clears throat> there is some color that can be seen when you're actually out in the space in the spaceship. Oh my god, I'm turning into the Bill Cosby <laughs> bad scene. But anyway, uh, red colored space clouds, I'm just going to go with that for expediency's sake, are not really, they don't have a lot of oxygen, so they're not like <clears throat> the friendliest place for us humans. And I'm talking about places where there's uh, like planets and moons and such like things and then if there's blue if there's like blue ones that means that there's oxygen and more likely to support life and you know maybe ours if we went there so I just yeah <laughs> now you know that okay so the next card I pulled was you have the power to create the life you love remember that Again, <laughs> on a personal note, this one, um, well, it gets personal. And it, for, I like that there's a light bulb because that is like <clears throat> reinforcing what I was saying about I did have an idea of exactly what was going on with the moon and how it was going to affect me. Should I open my mouth and start talking about stuff that not necessarily sensitive at all, but just, I just know sometimes it's better to just not be talking and, you know, but sometimes you have to because, well, here's the thing, like, I don't remember exactly what Mercury's doing right now, but I think it, we're in a period where it went retrograde and then, like, stopped and stationed got still for a minute so then it does different things and then oh went direct I think that's what I'm trying to say <clears throat> so then it looks like it's going in a normal direction like forward which it always is at all times but I'm not going to explain like retrograde and direct because I, I, I don't even understand it very well but two different things that part I get so um and but then like it goes from retrograde to direct and then I think back to, into retrograde and I'm not sure exactly when all of that is happening but <clears throat> I don't know it sounds like riding in the car and the car is like somebody that doesn't know how to drive with a clutch or something <laughs> it's kind of a jolt to your sort of psychic system <clears throat> But anyway, I had an idea with the light bulb that all of that was happening. So, I mean, that's good. And um, it was about creating the life and love that I would like. So, like I said, it got personal. And I'm sure, like, you know, things get personal for everybody. It, it's kind of a, an unusual thing because... I'll, I'll find myself, especially because there's retrogrades, they always, like, uproot something that 
you need to deal with or that you need to deal with more to finish whatever you got to do. Like, you just have to sometimes return to stuff. Um, and so, I mean, <laughs> that when you dig up stuff and it's emotional, it like digs up stuff and you get emotional. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, but it also is your opportunity to deal with it and uh, come to terms with it and fix it. Like, whatever you need to do, but, like, that's your time. And it, I guess it just recurs because we do it a lot. Like, we don't get it right the first time or the first ten times. <laughs> um, but eventually you, you, you do or, you know... Like, the next day comes, and to whatever degree, you have dealt with whatever it is somewhat. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why things happen, but I guess for us, that's why it's happening. Us uh, human beings. Hold on a second. So, the last card... <laughs> I think it goes in line with what I was saying about the retrograde stuff getting, you know, uprooted and pulled out for us to examine, re-examine, whatever it is. Guilt is a normal feeling. <laughs> just breathe in. Just breathe in and let it go. Oh, just. You know, if it were just, would we need to have retrograde returns to stuff? That is a peeve I have. Don't... It's along the lines of, why don't you just lose weight? Well, let's see, I've been overweight since I've been, like, in the single digits of my age. And if I haven't, like, cracked that nut yet, you think you coming along and going, just lose weight is going to make it happen? Like, okay, so <laughs> that's my problem with it. Don't be all, don't just be all dropping a, just do this. Why don't you just buy another one? Why don't you just, like, why don't you just keep your opinion to yourself? If you're going to be that way about it. <laughs> Rant concluded. <laughs> okay, so, uh, when you pull up stuff, why do you bury it? Why has it been buried in the first place? Well, that's what you have to examine, but I imagine guilt comes into it a lot. I often regret something I said, either because I personally have some reason that, like, it wounded me that I did a thing or said a thing, and I can hear that. Hold on. Can you just settle down before you get us both in trouble? No! Okay. Please pardon my indiscretion. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know about everybody else, but guilt is often a component in these things that get, you know, uh, dug up <laughs> from the grave to be, uh, what is the word for that? When you go back, come on, law and order memory. Well, whatever. When, uh, you know what I'm going to remember as soon as I turn off the camera? <laughs> well, anyway, when you uproot something that you buried for, I'm going to say, like, the all-purpose reason of, I don't want to deal with that right now. <laughs> uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm honest and I can't believe people are so much different than me. <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, guilt is a normal feeling, though. I mean, you don't even have to be having, like, retrograde examination guilt. It can just be an everyday thing, you know? And the thing about guilt is, is that for it to, like, happen to you, to work on you, I feel like there has to be a like a willingness involved, like a sort of an admission of guilt almost, like. 
Why do you feel guilty? Did you do something to feel guilty for? That's how it works. So if you're feeling it, I don't know what an artificial mechanism to have a guilt feeling without having done something to feel like you feel guilty for. And the other thing about it is like, it's not just you. It goes to that quantum thing again. Like other people come into play because if other people didn't look upon you and go, ooh, judgment, like, ooh, you shouldn't have done that, or whatever it is, like, may maybe they like it. I don't know. <clears throat> but they have taken notice of it, and that's when it becomes a thing that can turn into something that you're guilty about, guilty for. Isn't that interesting? As above, as below, as in this dimension, <laughs> as in the next one over, or whatever. Um, but the thing is, is, um, we don't need to take that on, you know, like, we don't even have to acknowledge that there's a guilt thing, and I don't mean, like, in the sense of if you've done something wrong and hurt something, or someone, rather, you know, like, committed some crime, that's a different thing, but if you're just feeling guilty I guess even about that because it's uh, like I'm talking about like a transcendence in a way and I don't know what well, people in prison have them all the time so yes and guilt can be transcended like you can you can bypass it you don't even have to go there in the first place but like I said it's not just a you thing it also is going to involve other people depending on what the uh, I want to say crime infraction whatever the infraction is it, it could be a crime but I'm not talking about that kind of guilt <clears throat> and and so the advice I was going to say admin admin <laughs> admonition yeah I was going to say admonition funny that that came out <laughs> I think that's some kind of guilt residue. The ad admission? The advice. God, the advice is to just breathe in and let it go. So, just lecture aside, previous just commentary aside, breathe in and let it go. You know, that's what it ultimately all comes down to. Or... It's such a uh, fundamental part of using your body, um, coming to understand it better. There's a lot of ways that you could come to that come to that understanding. Like many many roads will bring you there, and um, what you do with the understanding will take you places too so uh i don't know what i was talking about to send me down that road <laughs> something about understanding stuff and um it you know like when you begin the awakening process you it's just amazing like how many things that either you already knew about that you just view in a new way or you didn't know and it just puts a whole new cast on everything so I think I'm gonna stop here I had more to say about moonlight stuff but this is good <laughs> thank you and good night